Okay, 256E Buchla control voltage processor. Uh, totally digital module, very cool for CV processing. And I will show some practical applications for it and it is currently set up showing four windows of the most commonly used applications. Right now this is just set to direct uh, pass through. So what comes in is what comes out. Here we have a breakpoint being used, and that's as a frequency doubler when you have this triangle, and I'll explain that in a bit. This is a simple inverter, so that, uh, well, it inverts. And this is an attenuator, but we'll step through each one, show practical applications, etc. Now, it's actually a pretty simple and straightforward module, and to understand it, you just need to look at the legending on the topmost channel, channel A. It's the only one where it's written, output at zero volts in and output at 10 volts in. So this is the input from zero to 10 volts and this is the output from zero to 10. So looking at the numbers, output at zero volts in, I have zero set to zero, but if zero is now set to 10, it's actually generating a control voltage of 10 volts out, right? So now, 0 volts in equals 10 volts, and 10 volts in equals 10 volts is just a straight DC 10 volts. So once again, to make that super clear, looking at the window, input is on the X, Y is output, and this is just a straight transfer function of what comes in, what is what comes out. And to explain what's going on, we have an ear drill LFO here, the DLFO. The orange cable is on the red slower LFO with a slightly different wave shape. The green cable is to the green side with a faster LFO with a triangle. And we're going to play around with it and uh, show some of the features of the unit. Now, here we're listening to the red, obviously, and you can see red is corresponding to the blue LED output because it's a straight transfer function. But let's with mess with it a little bit we can, as I showed earlier, bias things up into the upper range. So it doesn't descend as low for the LFO. Or attenuate, which is what you're seeing down here. If we mimic that here, you're now saying 10 volts can only get up to, I guess, about 5 volts, somewhere in there. So in of 10 volts equals only five-ish volts out. That should be pretty clear at this point. And this now allows you to constrain control voltages and only use this as a guide. It's definitely not exact by any means. So we've really constrained it and now we can give it a very limited sweep and then actually go through and invert. So you can see how easy it is to just play with control voltages, set up very interesting and bizarre LFOs, which we can show by using breakpoints as well. So one of the great features of the 256E is it's the only Buchla branded control voltage processor, not even the 257E will do this, that acts as a um, VCA for control voltages. So you have input A1, you can see here, panned over here, and then A2, which is this with the blue line. And this input here is a CV control for this pot. And this pot basically just allows you to crossfade between the A1 red LFO and A2 green LFO inputs. So it's fake mixing, it's really crossfading. Equal mix. And then again, of course, you could have the transfer functions going on, constraining that. Let's just make it pass through. Fully green. Fully red. Anywhere in between. 
and that is the basic functionality of the module. Um, Breakpoints, inversion, all that kind of stuff will, will show practical applications, but that is an explanation of everything except breakpoints. Now here on the D channel, I'm just going to use it, oh, well, hey, we already have it, no, we'll just use it here on D. I'll plug in here, and you'll see now we have just remote control over the crossfading. So that's just done by... Sending a control voltage in. So you could put that on a touch plate or anything you want. Set this back to being a bit of an expensive attenuator. And now we'll take a look at the breakpoint feature showing frequency doubling. And to do that, I'm just going to unpatch the red LFO. We'll stick it into B1. We'll take the output. And the output is going to a 261E, and it's going to the symmetry input, which has no attenuator. So it's nice to have this and also use it as an attenuator if you want to uh, make up for the fact that that knob is missing on the symmetry of the 261E. So now, again, blue is going right to the symmetry input. And if we pay attention to what we talked about earlier, input of 0 to 5 is now scaling to 10 volts. So between 0 and 5 volts, it's going all the way to 10. And then once it gets past 5, so 5 point, etc., it's now telling it to go from 10 to 0. And that's how you get a frequency doubling effect. So let's turn this to a triangle to make it a little bit easier to hear and now you see because it's a clean triangle this is doubled and if you wanted to attenuate that doubling you could then go from one output into another channel and then attenuate it but here if you try to do that um, you're already attenuated <laughs> so um, you can move this around to change the wave shape or bring it down this way to attenuate and still keep doubling but you can't really move this guy well I mean you can but it's not the same effect you're changing the wave shape more than anything so I hope that is clear and I'm going to show an example with the 223E touch plate, of course, works with the 222E and any other touch plate or any control voltage as well as to how to use something, uh, how to set something up that's practical with breakpoints. So that's just frequency doubling with some wave shape mutation. Okay, inverter is pretty simple to understand, right? So again, looking at our legending we talked about earlier, we have got zero volts is now suddenly equal to 10 volts in, but as we move along to 10 volts coming on the input, it's being turned to zero volts, right? So that's a straight attenuator. Don't think it needs much more explanation. And because there's zero volts coming in, nothing plugged in, we have a solid 10 volts coming out. Easy. Now for attenuation, ugh, going into D1, that's not being used. Very simple, right? Zero volts equals zero in. As we move along to 10, just imagine a line going this way. 10 volts equals whatever that's set to. A couple volts, maybe. Oops. Attenuate. Bias it to a window so you can constrain it. And those are the four most often used um, practical examples. As mentioned, this is the only Buchla branded module capable of being a uh, 
VCA for control voltages. Of course, you have the Studio H254E, which does it as well and is completely analog and has preset management. But if we're just talking about bootless stuff, this is the one, and again, the 257E does not do this, although it has slew and other features and maintains or retains the breakpoints. On the 256E, all you have to do, my preferred way of doing it, is to have the CV that I wish to inject into the signal or control going into the second channel, and then whatever you're using to control that CV goes into the select. So pan or crossfade this guy all the way to A, so nothing's happening, and then as I increase control voltage to the select input, it brings in the control voltage that's going still to our 261E symmetry input. So that could be obviously on a touch plate control or even another LFO. So let's stick in the slow triangle. All right, pretty self-explanatory. Again, 254E from Studio H does similar. Two five six E practical applications of the breakpoints, and I tended to use breakpoints quite often with the mighty touch plate interface, the two two three E in my case, or two two two. But any control voltage would be the same, as would um, even the non E series uh, controllers that are out there. I know low gain makes some things. I forgot the model numbers are, but the ones that are clones or mimics of the hundred series does not matter. And in this case, we have the touch plate control voltage. The pitch is going to the pitch input on the 261E, as you would expect. We have the blue bananas that is connected to pressure. So pressure on the key, which is actually surface area um, on the keys, how much surface area you're covering. It's not really pressure. But um, the uh, blue is going to channel A. We do have a transformation going on. And then location on the keys up and down is going to channel B. And you can see there's no transformation. Um, the green cable on location is going to the pitch of the modulation oscillator. And it is also simultaneously via the orange cable going into modulation index. The blue is going straight into symmetry as before, and that's on pressure. So if I take the breakpoint off on pressure, you have this functionality here, but I would like it to swing more. You see the huge difference this makes. And why do I want this much sensitivity for pressure down here at the base? Well, because I have the um, location set to do this. So pressure right now is really light. Barely touching it. Now I'm pushing harder. You see I can get a lot of pressure just by moving my fingers a little bit. And if I don't want to bring in the vibrato, I have to play at the, the base of the key. But I still want to be able to use pressure. So fine-tuning how your touch plate works is one of the... Uh, if you want to do it, a 256E is a, a wonderful, wonderful device to be able to do that due to the breakpoints. So we can play with it again on pressure, getting rid of breakpoint. I mean, that tells the whole story right there. So we could say, no, let's make it, so I have to push harder or really sensitive. So I'm keeping my right hand on the touch plate, doing the same motion, and I can fine tune sensitivity with the breakpoint. Okay, that's a little crazy. 
So something like that works for me in my style. And then if I wanted to introduce just the vibrato, so so powerful for tuning how you play now let's play um with the breakpoint here and this is what i call the button approach so according to um uh what it does is basically the breakpoint now sets the location for what i call the cutoff to that you turn the top part into basically a hard on, oops, hey, into a, uh, a button for the parameter. So as you go up, you're constraining that linear motion into a narrower window. And it's already at maximum, no change. And why is this cool? Well, you can do something for performances where you're you can turn the top into a button to go full blast. That's generally how I use breakpoints. This is a practical application of how to use inversion to crossfade between two channels. So in this case, I'm using the Eardrill QVCA, so it's four VCAs. It's got an internal mixer in it, so I'm just using that here, going to the exact same channel output. And we're taking our red LFO, going here, simple pass through. I could actually not even use this and just go straight to the VCA input, no difference, but orange, is the output into channel one or channel A. A is going to R261E VCA. And then I have a morphing terrarium here. Same LFO, just being inverted. And now you're hearing the difference. So this is the CV control voltage out to the VCA and pretty self-explanatory as this rises it's dropping this one down and raising this one up. Crossfading. This can also be used for panning on the 206E or any other control voltageable panable mixer. So let's take a quick listen to that. This is using inversion as a fun trick to do some auto panning uh, maneuvers here. Uh, I can only show this on the iPhone, unfortunately, because I just don't uh, have, it's too impossible to set up at the moment. So uh, we have the inverted channel, the white cable coming out, going to the right side, which happens to have uh, an oscillator going into it. It's a, a morphing terrarium here on the black cable. And on the other side, we have the 261E, and we have the non-inverted CV going to the left side. And as you know, on the 206s, there's no pan control knob. Instead, you have a CV knob. This one's hard pan left. This guy's hard pan to the right. Um, let's put the iPhone away for now and get the concept. So white is right and yellow is left. And um, we don't actually even need to use this top channel at all. I'm only doing it so you can see the inverted relationship. You could just take the yellow one coming out of our LFO. Oops, this serves no purpose. And uh, you can just invert the one LFO, use your bananas to molt it off, and you get the same effect here. Uh, no problem. What this does allow for, and we'll put it back just because it allows you to see the blue LED and it's cool looking. What this does do um, is you get to see the inversion and now you can play with LFO tricks. Like let's have a quick ramp up to the right side. The inverse here with a different LFO shape. Play with rate. Oh, kind of nauseating. This would be uh, 
under CV control on the eardrum module, which is cool when you could do this stuff. Now, another fun thing um, that this allows you to do is, hey, what about our friend the frequency doubler if we add in the breakpoints? Well... Now we have frequency doubler and inversion, which is why it's cool to use a second channel for the um, non-inverted signal. So that is our speed on the LFO, and we're just frequency doubling it and frequency double inversion, doing a V-shape. Ah, chaos. Power breakpoints. 